We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, just for the, the record, um, I'm uh, Tom Ramis, the director, and uh, is going to run the meeting t today because our illustrious leader, uh, President Denton, has uh, some equipment malfunction and uh, hearing aid, so he asked that I uh, run the meeting. And then we also have uh, two alternates here today, Ms. Sandine from uh, West Sacramento and Brian Turner from RD900. So uh, with that, we'll start the meeting. Uh, and first item is agenda approval. So I'll ask for I'll a motion. A motion. I'll, I'll, I'll move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Have it. Uh, we had a closed session beforehand. Uh, we have a report on the closed session. Uh, the, the board did meet in closed session to confer with its legal counsel regarding existing litigation, and no action was taken. Thank you. Uh, public comment on matters not on the agenda. Uh, I do not see any uh, members of the public for comment today, so um, we'll move uh, forward with the approval of uh, the minutes for July 19th and July 29th. I move that we approve uh, the, uh, the minutes for July 19th and July 29th. And uh, excuse me, uh, board members, the, the second set of meetings is for the June 29th. June 29th, oh, excuse June 29th. me. Yeah. June 29th. Okay, then I, I amend my, uh, my motion. <laughs> and I'll, sec I'll second those. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, review of monthly year-to-date revenue expenses. Good morning, members of the board. This report is for June 2016. It's the last month of the fiscal year. The agency had a starting cash position of approximately $6.1 million. Uh, no appreciable revenues were received during the period. And expenditures for the month totaled $1.8 million. Most of that was work on the Southport project related to uh, land acquisition and relocations and also uh, work on the uh, Village Parkway construction project. Um, at the end of June, the agency's cash position was approximately $4.2 million. Um, and that would end the position for June. It, this is the uh, last report of the fiscal year, so we'll see some uh, accounting entries done by finance that as they close the books out, which will change the number a little bit. Um, we're expecting a $2.5 million payment from DWR today, actually. It's supposed to be wire transfer today, so that'll will be very helpful. And they're working on quarter 19 invoice review right now. So that's starting to queue up another payment for another $2 million as well. Um, we we're supposed to receive real estate letters, uh, letters from DWR approving the real estate plans, which will kick off, hopefully, uh, a review and true up of the real estate acquisition costs that the project has incurred as well. Um, with that, that ends my report for the, for the um, month of June. Thank you. Any questions? No. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. There is one item there. I'll move consent. Uh, second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Um, item seven, consideration of approval of preliminary terms and authorization to execute the expression of interest letter associated with the establishment of a bank line of credit. It's a long sentence there. Uh, so, um, members of the board, um, yeah, we're, we're here today to have you consider an action approving a revised uh, term sheet <clears throat> with First Northern Bank. Um, a few months ago, you provided us direction to, uh, to work on negotiating the line of credit. And, um, and in that time, we um, came up with some conclusions with the bank on, on some changes, and hence that's why we're, we're bringing you a, a revised term sheet. But you know, again, the goal is to get a revolving line of credit in place to help support uh, cash flows during the construction of the Southport project. So um, in looking at the, uh, the changes in the term sheet, let's just focus in on that. Um, number one, we, uh, we were looking at a uh, a $10 million line, and, uh, and um, since that time we had provided the bank with a revised uh, cash flow model which shows 
um, less of a need for the line of credit based on you know tightening up those reimbursements and advances from the state. And so um, what, what the bank is looking at is providing us with a $3.5 million line. And then um, it, at some point, the cash flow model indicates that we might need an additional, you know, three million. So, you know, there would be the ability to go back and expand that that line to to a total of 6.5 million, uh, should it be needed uh, later in time. Uh, another change is one of the issues that came up was collateralization. As we know, banks always like collateral when they loan money, <laughs> and. Um, you know, it, the bank was really looking at the state payments as the form of, of collateral, and we ran into some legal issues with an inability to assign you know, state payments to a third, private, third party private entity. And so the bank did come back with a proposal to do an uncollateralized uh, line of credit. So we would, we would not have any requirement to, to do that. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, while when you, when, you, when you draw on the line of credit, you're paying an interest rate that's a typical index, in this case, the Wall Street Journal index rate. It's like LIBOR, but it's a, a different, different type of index. Um, you know, the, the revised cash flow model showed that there were many months before the line of credit would be needed. So it could be as much as a year and a half before we drew on the line. And for the bank, that money is parked and you know, not earning anything. And so they do have what is something new called an unused fee and that would be about 50 basis points. And so for the time period when um, we were not drawing on the line of credit, that fee would be charged, and so about 50 basis, basis points on an annualized basis. And to give you some comparison, that is very similar to what the city charges when we do interphone fund loans here at the city. So it's, it's, it's a rate that's tied to the state of California, the state treasurer's office, LAFE rate. So, um, we think that that unused fee is reasonable, and, and so we're recommending that we, that, that would be something that, that uh, you would agree to when we bring back the, uh, the final loan documents for your approval. And, um, and, and one additional thing that we asked for is we were concerned about the timing of the line of credit. You know, you have these, these long time periods before you start closing out the project and, and getting your, your final retention monies from the state. So we wanted to go from uh, three years to, to four years in terms of the term, so the, the bank is willing to do that. So um, if, if uh, assuming that you, you recommend we proceed with these terms, um, there are a few more items that the bank needs to take it to underwriting, and that would probably take a few weeks for us to get that to them. Assuming that the underwriting gets approved, then um, we, we finalize loan documents, and then those would come back to you for your approval, um, likely in, at your October meeting. And that, that concludes uh, the presentation, if you have any questions. Any, any questions? Just a quick one. It, this is simply for uh, managing cash flow. That's why we would be um, pursuing this. <clears throat> uh, it, that's exactly okay. it. Exactly it, yes. Okay. Uh, we approve the loan documents. When, do we, when would we execute? Are we required to execute in a certain amount of time, or if it takes a while to establish the contract and, and actually start construction? Is there, is there a... Well, the, 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 the time period, the, the lag would be between which time it goes to the bank's underwriting and which time we bring it back to you to approve the loan documents. That, that's probably a good two months because you have to go back and forth on the legal language in the loan documents. And then uh, you would authorize uh, the, um, uh, maybe the treasurer to execute the agreement on your behalf. And so as soon as you approve it, we would basically execute it and the line of credit would be in place, let's say in advance of a potential uh, you know, award of a uh, construction contract in November. So our goal would be to get, it in, get this line of credit in place in advance of, the, of that, that uh, contract being led. Okay. And then I guess the final question, you, you talked about a four-year term. Um, if uh, construction goes well and payments are coming in, we can expire this uh, line at any time? Yes, uh, again, as long as we have the cash to pay any outstanding balance, we could, right. we could terminate at any time without any penalties. Very good. Mm -hmm.
I did. Could you ask if, if there's any uh, change in the state uh, distribution of the money coming back to us? Because of the loan? Yeah. We have so much money come from the state, you know. Uh, did you get that? You, you know, you're hey, asking. Um, I, I didn't hear all of the things, so you may have already asked the question. I'm talking about state reimbursement. Correct. Do we have any uh, uh, changes in that at all? Are we going to be able to rely on them to uh, get uh, timely distribution back to us, or where are we at? I believe that that is the hope that uh, distribution, you know, reimbursements happen in a timely manner. Even with them, there's the possibility of needing some of this, some of these funds to to bridge, but. If everything follows according to procedure, you know, we, they anticipate that this um, line will be sufficient enough to be able to make the payments. But as, as monies over. come in, we, we'll pay this line back down on a regular basis. Did it carry us over then? Yeah. I think the question was about the reliability and our belief in the reliability of state, of the state reimbursements. Um, it's been, uh, a bureaucratic process, but um, as we get closer to construction, uh, the, our partners at the state have been more and more focused on throughputting our payments. So at this point, um, on the construction side, we think they'll be timely, and the um, the delay with some of the, um, the with the 106 process, which has pushed construction off till next year, mostly, um, is actually will allow the real estate process to potentially catch up as well. So um, we remain optimistic right now that we're going to have adequate resources on hand. So this, is, this isn't a second that we're putting on the... No, <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, got it. They've, they've, they've uh, provide, the state has provided some funds in advance, right? They will. Yeah, uh, they will. As okay. soon as we go out to bid and get to that process and we can uh, develop uh, a refined work plan. Mm -hmm. We'll submit that to the state and we'll develop uh, an advanced uh, Very good. payment for that purpose. Very good. Yeah, and, and if I could just add, um, the line of credit really is there as a tool should we need it. Um, our hope is that we don't need it yes. and that the state's advances and true process will be timely. Um, but, but knowing that they're bureau how bureaucratic they are, uh, we feel like it's necessary to have this in place so that we don't experience any delays during the actual project construction. So we need to have this financial tool in our, in our tool belt uh, just in case. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Then uh, I'd entertain a motion for, for approval. I'll move the recommended action. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. With Safeco project updates, Mr. Fabin. Thank you. Director Ramos, members of the board, I'll just go over a few of um, the items that are um, from the progress report. Um, on the Southport project, um, we recently received um, some approval of environmental permits. So our 401 permit from the Regional Water Quality Control Board was completed. Uh, we, we have received the final stream bed alteration agreement from the California um, Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, to execute. We are executing in the process of executing that. Um, the outstanding permits um, are the 408 approval from the Corps as well as the Section 404 permit also from the Corps, but those are uh, ra uh, wrapping up. Um, what I heard last week from the Corps on the 408 was that it was routing uh, through headquarters for signature. Um, so once that's received at the, dis at the district, um, what they will issue their letter of permission uh, under 408 once the uh, 404 permit is complete. And we're in the final stages of wrapping that one up. Under Section 106, consultation with the Corps, um, the Historic Property Management Plan, HPMP, um, was routed for um, comments to the consulting parties, i.e. the tribes. Um, they received comments, pretty significant comments from one of the tribes. So the Corps is in the process of reading those comments and we will work with them to respond uh, to those comments and make any uh, appropriate changes to the historic property management plan and then finalize that plan. 
On the real estate side, as Mark mentioned, the real estate plan has been approved. Um, we heard, uh, I guess it was earlier this week, beginning of this week, that the final signatures were, were inked, and so that is now just being routed through us, to us through the mail. Um, that's a huge uh, milestone from the real estate process, where now the, the packages that have made them already made their way through the Department of um, General Services can now be reviewed by the flood program office for uh, hopefully review of concurrence and then um, payment. Exactly. <laughs> and then also um, Paul is uh, spearheading uh, final accounting packages and he's focusing primarily on uh, those that have been settled through the courts uh, to be routed through um, the state uh, because there's, they, those really don't go through contested. So we're hoping to expedite um, the review and approval of those um, payments from the state. And then he's also working on some pretty large um, acquisitions uh, to get those uh, packages put together and routed as quickly as possible. So hopefully they'll be reviewed and approved by, by both parties and get some additional cash coming our way. So that's the plan on real estate. And I'd say that um, talking with Paul yesterday, we're about 95% uh, through the real estate acquisition process as far as all of the um, parcels that we need to um, settle on um, or be in, uh, in the court proceedings with dates certain um, and or position and use for some of the temporary um, access needs. Oh. Also under the 106 process. So as, you, as the board is aware, we've been doing some of the uh, cultural uh, inventory um, work, pre-construction, going out and doing uh, augering and trenching in the project footprint. Um, we are about 75% complete with that effort. Um, no significant cultural material has been found thus far. Um, <clears throat> and we have completed all of the um, inventory for the areas where we have a, where we could potentially have avoided should there have been things found. So we have now um, provided all of the information to the design team that was needed i.e. no changes, so they can finalize uh, the bid packages and get those things out to bid, get the project out to bid. So right now, uh, the schedule shows that we would be uh, first week of September um, going out to bid, about a 45-day uh, bid period, uh, open bids on or around October 27, and then we would plan to bring a contract back to the board for consideration in, uh, the, at the November board meeting. So that's the plan for letting the construction contract at this point. Um, and although the cultural process has delayed when effective levy construction could begin, there still is a lot of things that the contractor can do in advance of levy construction, like clearing and grubbing, tree removal, uh, demolition of structures. And so uh, to the extent feasible, those things can happen during, uh, during the winter before we look at doing uh, levy work, appreciable levy work next year. If there's going to be anything that's going to be in water, like segments A and G that are on, um, you know, where they have the repair and play segments, those can't be done until like the April to October time frame. But a lot of work can be done gathering borrow from the borrow areas and working on the setback levy alignment, weather permitting. So um, we'll have to see how this unfolds as after the con contract's awarded. But we're hopeful that we'll be able to do some appreciable work during the winter. Yeah, uh, and I think the oh, only other thing I wanted to um, point out was that uh, we just received notification from the state for the annual emergency preparedness and flood season coordination meeting. That's coming up uh, October 19 in Sacramento. They hold it in various places, but the Sacramento Region uh, Workshop or, or coordination meeting is in October. <clears throat> and uh, I anticipate that with SAFCA and city staff both will, will attend the, that uh, coordination meeting. And that concludes my update. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> Hearing none, any other items? If not, uh, we're adjourned. Thank you all.
Just fine.